Good day, brothers and sisters. This is Lynette from Avishua Ministries. Welcome to our next chapter of the Deliverance Manual. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> Let's continue. In the image of Satan, just as the Lord wants sons and daughters to become like him, walking in his image, just so the devil wants to raise children in his image. We read of John's writings regarding being children of God and walking in such a manner. 1 John 2 And now little children abide in him, that when he appears we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. 1 John 3 Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who has this hope in Him purifies himself, just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was one of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods, and sees his brother in need, and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before Him. For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, as He gave us commandments. Satan's idea, when it comes to his followers or children, is very much opposite to the idea of God. He wants children who are rebellious, sinful and destructive, and who loves the world and who loves the pleasures and gratifications of the flesh. John again reminds us of the agenda of the devil in 1 John 2. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that it is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does, not, who does the will of God abides forever. Also in 1 John 2, John warns about the coming of the Antichrist. Dear children, this is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. 
for if they had belonged to us they would have remained with us but their going showed that none of them belonged to us but you have an anointing from the Holy One and all of you know the truth I do not write to you because you do not know the truth but because you do know it and because no lie comes from the truth who is the liar it is whoever denies that Jesus Christ is the Christ such a person is the Antichrist denying the Father and the Son no one who denies the Son has the Father whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also the fact of the matter is that Satan wants to rise up children who are antichrists, thus children who walk in darkness, who deny the Lord and who deny the tr truth of God. This is part and parcel of Satan's great agenda, to lead people astray so that they will wander away into darkness, thus become, be overcome by spiritual darkness and by spiritual desolation. Satan has a very clear and very specific plan which is to get people to deny God and thus deny eternal living. He wants people to become rebellious, lustful, hateful and full of hate. Satan wants, his, want this, uh, wants people to become uh, more like him, a fallen angel who is angry and who wants to take revenge against God. Satan sins the day of his fall from heaven strikes out against God's creation, primarily man who has been made in the image of God. He is after all a destroyer, a liar, a deceiver, a manipulator and a fraud. As he is so, he wants others to be and those who act like him are doomed in their path of self-destruction. Spiritual warfare is to identify Satan's agenda, to identify his work within man and then by the truth and by the Spirit of the Lord to counter such demonic action to bring people into liberation. When Jesus said that we, his followers, will be identified by our fruit in Galatians 5, it is also true that those who are willingly or unintentionally influenced by the devil will bear the mark of the devil's character and the dragon's fruit, which is the fruit of the flesh. We can then identify if someone is under the influence of Satan, if they bear the image of Satan, meaning they show familiar signs of the devil's nature, his character, actions and behavior. In Revelation 13 describes this process. Uh, then I stood on the sun, sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and on his horns ten crowns and on his heads a blas blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne and great authority. And I say, well, saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to, to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth um, in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from uh, slain from the foundation of the world if anyone has an ear let him hear he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity he who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword here is the patience and the faith of the saints let's continue with the beast from the earth then I saw another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in the presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived 
he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. His number is 666. Here we see the rise of the two beasts, one being the false prophet, the Antichrist, that are under the authority of the dragon, which is Satan. Both these beasts, one being an individual and the other an organization, a corporation or a world power manifest the image of the dragon so they are the spawns of the father of destruction this is after all the work of the devil to spawn children that will resemble him in image the mark on the foreheads will f uh, will for example be just another sign of those who will walk in the image of the dragon remember satan wants to destroy the image of god on earth and he wants to do by rising up sons and daughters who reject the image of god by rather adopting the image of the fallen angel. God has made us perfect in his image, but this is what infuriates Satan. So he wants man to rather portray an image of darkness and doom instead of light and hope. We also read in verse 15 regarding the work and the false prophet. The work of the false prophet. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast and that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So the work of the beast out of the sea and the beast out of the earth has one goal, to promote and to advance the image of Satan on earth, and the dragon grants power to his servants by demonic strength to achieve such a task. And such a task will involve many false works of healing, signs and wonders. Indeed, the beast out of the sea will wage war with God's children. Such a conflict is illustrated throughout scriptures where the devil's children and God's children are in conflict. Think for example the tension between Saul and David. Think also of the conflict between Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar, between Jesus and the Pharisees and even between Paul and the pagan Gentiles. When we read in scriptures of those that are wicked and full of rebellion, they will often resemble the character and the nature of Satan. It is after all Satan's plan and purpose of all mankind to look like him spiritually and then naturally and to act and to behave like him. There are many names and, and descriptions of Satan. As he is, so he wants people in to become. There are more names for Satan in the Bible than for anyone else except Jesus Christ, taken from the New King James Version of the Bible. Abaddon, Hebrew name for Satan meaning, meaning destruction, and they had, they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apol Apollyon, the Revelations 9.11. The accuser, then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have, have come for the accuser of our brethren who accuses them before our God day and night has been cast down. Revelations 12.10 Adversary, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5.8 Angel of light, and no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11.14 angel of the bottomless pit and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in hebrew is abaddon but in greek he has the name apollyon revelation 9 11 antichrist and every spirit that does not confess that jesus christ has come into the flesh is not of god and this is the spirit of the antichrist which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world 1 john 4 3 Apollyon, Greek name for Satan mean, meaning destroyer, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit whose name is in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon, Revelations 9.11. Beast. Then a third angel followed them, saying in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or, or, or on his hand, 
He himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Revelations 14.9 Who is the beast? Beelzebub, now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. Matthew 12.24 Belial, and what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? 2 Corinthians 6.15 Deceiver, so the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelations 12.9 Devil, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3.8 Dragon. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast, cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelations 12 9. Enemy. The enemy who saved, sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Matthew 13. 39. Evil one, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. John 17.15. Father of lies, you are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. John 8.44 God of this age, whose minds the the minds uh, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, least lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. Is the king of Babylon that you will take up his proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How the oppressor has ceased, the golden city ceased. Isaiah 14 verse 4. The king of the bottomless pit, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name of Polyon. Revelations 9.11. The lawless one. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, but that they might be saved. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 8 to 10. Leviathan, in the day the Lord will, with his severe sword, great and strong, will punish Leviathan the fleeing serpent, Leviathan the twisted serpent, and he will slay the reptile that is in the sea. Isaiah 27 verse 1. He is a liar. You are of your father the devil, and the eyes of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, resources for he is a liar and the father of it. John 8 verse 44 uh, the beast is Lucifer. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne down above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the furthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Isaiah 14 verse 12. In the specific scripture, Lucifer that was thrown out of heaven because he was rebellious and today we can see as well that rebellion has taken hold of most people. People are rebellious, they do not want to serve God and thus there is chaos in this world. Everybody is following their own desires, their own free will and uh, as the word says as well that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. 
Okay, and the beast is man of sin. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 to 4 um, is a murderer. You are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. John 8.44 the power of darkness. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Yes, the blood of Jesus is stronger than any power of darkness. The prince of the power of the air. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you are once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Ephesians 2, 2 verse 1 Roaring Lion Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Uh, you must remember that Satan is a, he, 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 uh, imitates the things of God and that's why they call him the roaring lion. He will come forth as an angel of the light. He will come forth as a lion but he is there only to devour and to kill, to destroy. Okay, he's the ruler of darkness. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6.12 Ruler of demons, but some of them said he cast out demons by Beelzebub, the ruler of the, of the demons. Luke 11.15 is the ruler of this world. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw people to myself. John 12.31 He is Satan and he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beast and the angels ministered to him. Mark 1.13 is the serpent of old. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Revelations 12, 9 Son of perdition, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 is the tempter. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Matthew 4 verse 3, this was the temptations where uh, Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness, in the desert, for when he, where he was for 40 days. Thief, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. John 10.10 10, Wicked one, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Ephesians 6.16 Jesus says in John 8, You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Jesus points out that he could tell if someone is fo following the devil by their actions, by their behavior and by their character. In this case he makes the point that the devil is a murderer, a deceiver and a liar. Those who follow such ways, thus walking in the footsteps of this fallen angel, will also be prone to lie and deceive. Satan wants mankind to portray the image, the darkness and not the light and the love of the Lord. Satan after all wants to abolish the image of God. 
uh, on earth and promotes his own image. This is his master plan, but he needs his servants, the demons and the mortal man, to achieve his devious agenda. We read of Jesus' woes against the religious leaders in Matthew 23. But woe to you, scribe and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourself, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows, houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore you will receive greater condemnation. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel land and sea to win one proselyte, and when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of, of hell as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? And then whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing, but who Whoever swears by the gift that is on it, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? Therefore he who swears by the altar swears by it and by all things on it. He who swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. And he who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who sits on it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside you are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tomb of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous, and say, If we have lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore you are witnesses against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up them, then the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore indeed I send you prophets, wise men and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scour scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth from the blood of the righteous able to the blood of Zechariah son of Berechiah who you murdered between the temple and the altar assuredly I say to you all these things will come upon this generation what Jesus was describing when he highlighted the religious narrow-mindedness of the Pharisees and the Sadducees was the very nature of Satan. He who is the author of religion, Satan wants to keep people enslaved and removed from the truth of heaven. In the Old Testament we find two passages that allude to Satan, even though the passages respectfully we uh, primarily address the king of Babylon, Isaiah 14, and the king of Tyre, Ezekiel 28. The reason why Satan is also addressed as a secondary topic of interest is because the king of Babylon and Tyre resembled the character and nature of Satan. Thus, this word against these kings also implies against their father, Satan. It says in Isaiah 14, the fall of Lucifer, how you are fall from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the furthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depth of the pit. 
those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying is this the man who made the earth tremble who shook kingdoms who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities who did not open the house of his of his prisoners and also ezekiel 29 verse 11 moreover the word of the lord came to me saying son of man take up a lamentation for the king of tyre and say to him thus is the lord god you were this the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty you were in eden the garden of god every precious stone was your covering the sardius topaz and diamond beryl onyx and jasper sapphire turquoise and emerald with gold the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created you were the anointed cherub who covers I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created, till iniquity was found in you. But the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Even though Ezekiel 28 is a word against Tyre, it most certainly includes a word of woe against Satan. Again, so often throughout history, people resemble the image of Satan through their actions, word, character and nature. When God speaks against a nation, a kingdom or a person, then he also addresses Satan for those who walk in the fallen ways of the children of the dragon. Ezekiel 28 also gives us further insight into Satan, as does Isaiah 14. It speaks of Satan's arrogance and proud nature. It speaks of Satan's rebellion. It, however, also speaks of Satan's wisdom, perfection and beauty until he fell into shame and desolation. Let us take a, uh, a look, uh, stock of this for a minute. T Satan was perfect. He was wise and beautiful, but his arrogance and pride corrupted him. Still today, Satan wants mankind to substitute the knowledge of God for the knowledge of Satan. And Satan wants mankind to indulge in rebellion against God. Satan's wisdom corrupted by pride is a fool's wisdom and such wisdom is addressed by Paul in 1 Corinthians 1. Christ, the power and wisdom of God, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message pre preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of uh, weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see you, your calling, brethren, that now many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, nor many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no f flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Paul also addressed the dangers of outright rebellion against God and his ways in Romans 1. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because uh, what may the, be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, 
His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed for ever. Amen. For this reason God gave up to to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not li like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, con co covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are worship whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, uh, violent, proud, boasters, Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving and unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only to do, to do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. There you have it. If you approve of it, you're just as guilty. The nature of the Pharisees and Sadducees also spoke of rebellion against God's truth for they were not listening to Jesus but were ultimately being deceived by Satan. This is why they had taken on the character and nature of the father of lies. Just as Satan deceives and tricks people so the religious leaders were deceived and deceiving others thus shutting the gates of heaven to those who wanted to believe in Jesus. We can thus, thus assert that Satan is all about rebellion against God's ways and thus he has attacked the natural order of God. He wants to destroy God's love, truth and image on earth. Satan was perfect and pure to get vanity. This is however a sense of false beauty and the exaltation of the perfection and beauty has resulted in creation, crea creation worshipping itself, for example pornography. These days nude women are big business, while plastic surgery, the pursuit of perfection and beauty, is one of the biggest money spinners in the world. Satan is deceiving the world regarding what is true beauty and happiness, and so mankind goes on a journey towards finding false uh, gold and the illusion of fulfillment. The world is so focused on material fulfillment and instant gratification that we are choking on the stress and anxiety of reaching such goals. And as Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes, all such endeavors are but vanity, for God has created people in his image which is true beauty. Our true fulfillment lies not in our greed or in the gold or silver of this world, but in a relationship with the true living God. Satan has deceived the world to abandon such a journey of knowing the Lord for a journey of illusion and delusion. While the world is selling this idea of false beauty or focusing on the outer instead of the inner, it is driving people towards radical action such as anorexia and plastic surgery. Uh, plastic surgery excuse me. Those hooked on pornography are hooked on the naked flesh, but it has become addictive and destructive for this is an unnatural and the agenda is driven by Satan. Why do you think Paul constantly warned against sexual immorality? In 1 Corinthians 6, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. 
Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is is outside the body but he who commits a sexual immorality sins against his own body or do you not know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have from god and you are not your own for you were brought bought at a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's God gave man and woman the pleasure of enjoying each other sexually, but the devil has corrupted this to the point that adultery is rife. Homosexuality has become the norm, and even before marriage, multiple partners is alright. Multiple partners and thus sexual immorality is a characteristic of cults and sex, uh, sects, because Satan is the father of such movements. <clears throat> it is thus natural for cults and sects to take on the na nature of Satan and what Satan wants to advocate and promote. Cults and sects thus show a lot of signs of rebellion, murder, mayhem, destruction and deception. We find a perfect example of how cult leaders are raised up in the image of Satan and how they manifest the characteristics of nature of their father of lies. We may wonder how they get in in, in right to to receive people to follow them. It is partly um, of people's gullibility, but mostly it is because Satan is working in them to achieve the desired effect. Remember, Satan is the master of deception, and he knows how to use mass propaganda in order for people to believe in a lie. We see his work in countless political ideologies, radical humanistic movements, and of course cults. Satan knows how to sell a lie and how to convince people to follow such a lie. This is why the final Antichrist will be able to deceive so many because the final Antichrist will be used by the master of deception, lies, trickery, manipulation, extortion and propaganda, Satan. Throughout history, much of the bloodshed in the name of p politics or religion is the work of Satan. Satan loves to destroy and cause destruction, all the while sowing spiritual apostasy and corruption. Let us read Galatians 5, what it means to walk in the flesh, which is the way of Satan. Walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbreaks of uh, outbursts of wrath. Uh, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you before, and just as I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In the end, the path of Satan is dangerous because the wrath, he wants us to adopt an attitude of vanity, arrogance, and pride. It says in Psalm 119 verse 37, Turn my eyes away from worth worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. Jeremiah 4.30 says, What are you doing, you devastated one? Why dress yourself in scarlet and put on jewels of gold? Why highlight your eyes with makeup? You adorn yourself in vain. Your lovers despise you. They want to kill you. When the people of Israel asked for a king in the days of old, they were ever overjoyed at Saul being crowned, for in appearance he was beautiful, yet his spirit and heart longed not so much for relationship with God, but he yearned more for his own glory and fame. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him, for the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on at the heart. In the end, the Lord called David a man after his own heart. 
to take up the crown in Matthew 6 verse 1 we read about vanity in this case the vanity of being seen and recognized beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them for then you will have no reward from your father who is in heaven thus when you give to the needy sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be pr bruised by others truly I say to you they have received their reward but when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. Indeed, there are general dangers of pride and vanity. Pro Proverbs 8 verse 13 says, To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Pride is one human trait very much hated by God. Countless examples in both the Old and the New Testament confirms this. But God is instantly forgiving when pride is replaced by hum humility. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 4 verse 1, I am writing this not to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children. Even if you had 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have become your father through the gospel. Therefore I urge you to imitate me. For this reason I have sent to you Timothy, my son, whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. Some of you have become arrogant, as if I were not coming to you, but I will come to you very soon. If the Lord is willing, and then I will find out not only how these arrogant people are talking, but what power they have. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. What do you, do you prefer? Shall I come to you with a rod of discipline, or shall I come in love and with a gentle spirit? We have to remember pride, vanity was the original sin of the devil. There is a great danger if we take pride in ourselves to the point where it becomes idolatry. We must be careful to remain humble in the sight of God, so we must be careful not to be proud in our own intellect strength knowledge wisdom skills or abilities all of this will lead to a fall it speaks in 1 timothy 3 verse 6 about the qualification for this for for a deacon he must not be a recent convert or he may become this conceited and full fall full under the uh, same judgment as the devil indeed as it says in proverbs 16 verse 18 pride goes before destruction a haughty spirit before a fall we also read of Satan's deception in Genesis 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. It's, he said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat from the fruit from the tree of the garden, but God did say you must not eat from the fruit of that tree in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die you will not certainly die the serpent said to the woman for God knows that when you eat from it your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for uh, gaining wisdom she took some and ate it she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it here we see satan appealing to eve's vanity and eve's weakness to it adam and eve longed to be like god thus satan stirred up their ego and yearned to become godlike this is a similar problem we find throughout the world which with so many people suffering from a messiah complex thinking they are gods and saviors of mankind there is also a direct link between vanity and rebellion. The Old Testament has many examples of people who thought too much of themselves and their opinions. In Numbers 12 verse 1, Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moses because of his Cushite wife, for he had married a Cushite. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? They asked. Hasn't he also spoken through us? And the Lord heard this. Now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else in the face of the earth. At once the Lord said to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, 
come out to the tent of meeting, all three of you. So the three of them went out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud. He stood at the entrance to the tent and summoned Aaron and Miriam. When the two of them stepped forward, he said, Listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak face to face. Clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? The anger of the Lord burned against them and he left them. When the cloud lifted from above the tent, Miriam's skin was leprous. It became as white as snow and Aaron turned towards her and saw that she had a defiling skin disease. Miriam was jealous of Moses and his this speaks of the same pride that the devil showed the need for recognition and to be praised and to be also to be lauded. We also read of the rebellion of Korah in Numbers 16 verse 2. Korah son of Is- Izar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi the s- and certain Reubenites, Datan and Abiram, son of Eliab and on. Um, Onsen of Peleth became insolent and rose up against Moses. With them were 250 Israelite men, well-known community leaders who has been appointed in members of the council. They came as a group to oppose Moses and Aaron and said to them, You have come, gone too far. The whole community is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is with them. Why then do you set yourselves above the Lord's assembly? When Moses heard this, he fell face down, and he said to Korah and all his followers, In the morning the Lord will show who belongs to him and who is holy, and he will have that person come near him. The man he chooses he will cause to come near him. You, Korah, and all your followers are to do this. Take senses, and tomorrow put burning coals and incense in there before the Lord. The man and the Lord... The, uh, the man the Lord chooses will be the one who is holy. You Levites have gone too far. Moses also said to Korah, Now listen, you Levites, isn't it enough for you that the God of Israel has separated you from the rest of the Israelite community and brought you near himself to do the work of the Lord? tabernacle and to stand before the community and minister to them. He has brought you and all your fellow Levites near himself. But now you are trying to get the priesthood too. It is against the law that you are all your followers have banded together. Who is a Aaron that you should grumble against him? There is a great danger in rebelling against God, against God's servants, against God's word and truth. Korah discovered that such danger is very much real. Today, like a thousand of years, Satan's work, Satan works hard to entice and to influence people to rebel against God so that they will turn away from God. The dangers of rebellion, pride and vanity summed up in Jude 1. Ungodly people, dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals those condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign Lord. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep their position of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling. These he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment in the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversions. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority and uh, heap abuse on celestial beings. But even these archangel Michael, who he is disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand, and the very things they do understand by instinct, as irrational animals do, will destroy them. Woe to them! They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These people are blemishes at your love feast. 
eating with you without the slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blowing along the wind. Autumn trees without fruit and uprooted, twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea foaming up their shame, wandering stars, for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Enoch the seventh from Adam prophes prophesied about them. See the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts that have committed in their ungodliness and of all the defiant words uh, ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These people are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. Let us remember Proverbs 29 verse 23. A man's pride brings him low, but a man of lowly spirit gains honor. And also Psalm 51. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. I'm going to stop here for now. I will continue again next week. Thank you so much for um, joining us today. I pray that you are will be blessed that you were blessed by this uh, chapter and uh, we will speak to you again next week may god bless you